Well, my dad was a, a sailor in World War II. He was a postman in Chicago, joined the Navy after Pearl Harbor, uh, went away, was a postal clerk uh, on a destroyer in the Pacific. We didn't see him for three years. I had two uncles that were uh, sailors in the Navy. All three of them would send my brother and I back uh, things like coconuts and raiding badges and things of that nature. So I thought, this has got to be a good deal. And I set my heart on going to the Naval Academy. I was working as a second assistant janitor at a savings and loan on the south side of Chicago. One day, the fellow who was the vice president of the business uh, asked me what I was going to do when I got out of high school, and I said I wanted to go to the Naval Academy. He was clearly crestfallen because he was a very strong Republican businessman. And uh, three months later, he called me in and told me I had an appointment to the Naval Academy. He handed me a card that said 46 North Lake Road, Riverside, Illinois, and said I had to use that as my address so the congressman wouldn't make his constituents mad. So mum's the word, and he was right, and I got the appointment, and so that's a good Chicago story. In those days, everybody from the Naval Academy, unless you're gonna be a Marine, had to go to sea uh, for at least a year. So I was on a, uh, an attack transport. We were carrying Marines in the Western Pacific. It was fun, but I, you know, making landings on the east coast of Korea, but I couldn't see that as a career. So the first thing I could volunteer for was submarine school. Never been on a submarine in my life. Qualified early on that in submarines and got ordered to come back for an interview with uh, Admiral Rickover. So I came back, uh, had an interview with Rickover. He threw me out of the first interview and I had to go back four months later. Uh, after studying uh, math and physics and taking an exam, it was about a six hour exam, which I think was really penance. Uh, and then I came into the nuclear program. I think I was sort of a late bloomer. I was never an admiral's aide. I was never an executive assistant to an important civilian in the Pentagon and uh, just kept uh, shoveling away and uh, eventually I made uh, admiral. Well, there were a number of times that were, uh, that I think back uh, fondly on it. Uh, it probably breaks into two categories. Earlier was being at sea and doing very exciting uh, special operations missions off the coast of the Soviet Union on three different uh, attack submarines. That was, that was really fun. We gathered a lot of intelligence. We were ready to go. If the balloon should go up, uh, we were ready to uh, take out their Navy. They knew it. Uh, they didn't know what to do about it except spend money, and we sort of helped them get to the poorhouse. And finally, all that and the moral degradation of their whole society finally just caved in. So that, I think, was the very uh, heartfelt thing that most submariners feel. We contributed strongly to the demise of the Soviet Union. Later on in life, I was uh, sort of stuck in Washington for the last 15 years of my career, and that had its moments also, uh, working to get your programs through Congress and fighting sometimes with the bureaucracy in the Navy or the Department of Defense. Uh, those were exciting times also. I think that it's very, very critical that this country maintain a strong military because uh, there are many uh, other countries in the world that that's all they respect is power. And that doesn't mean we should be looking for fights to get into around the world, but it deters fights if you have a very strong military and people know it. I was the fundraiser for my Naval Academy class's 50th reunion gift, and we raised uh, $3.5 million to endow a chair in the Naval Heritage and the Department of History. We're all very proud of that. Uh, and then I got asked uh, to be the chairman of the Naval Historical Foundation and work on programs there, and I enjoy that very much because, once again, it's an area that I love, uh, history, and particularly naval history. It's the fabric of our country. It's what uh, made our country what it is today. We are, in fact, an island nation. I mean, we depend very much on overseas trade, both the Atlantic and the Pacific, and a strong Navy has always been very fundamental in making this uh, country uh, what it is today, and, and will continue to. Uh, and so uh, I believe that, uh, that that and what our Army has done, what our Air Corps and Air Force have done, Marine Corps have done, is very important to the, uh, as I said, the fabric of our country and our, our way of life.